Glad to have you with us here on the Chiefs Report. Tyler Jones here as we are talking predictions here on today's show. We're going to break down how the AFC West looks like heading into 2024. We'll give our record predictions for all four teams, including your Kansas City Chiefs, and hand out some superlatives for all four teams as well coming up in just a matter of moments. Before we do, since we're talking about the AFC West, do you want the Chiefs to win the AFC West? Like the video. Do your part. Don't jinx it, Chiefs Kingdom. I've been told that if you like today's video, that guarantees the division title. I know you may be thinking, Tyler, you're just making up stuff. Maybe I am. But why even jinx it? Why even take the chance? Just do your part. Like the video. We'll get started with today's show. Let's head to Denver first and begin with the Denver Broncos. And I think when you look at this Broncos team, they are the most likely to still not find their answer at the quarterback position. Ever since Peyton Manning left town, this team has been cursed at QB, and it has been glorious and very entertaining to watch. For the likes of Trevor Simeon, to, uh, Paxton Lynch, Russell Wilson was a disaster. Uh, you go on down the line, it's just been damn brutal for the Denver Broncos at quarterback. And I think Bo Nix is not going to be their savior of sorts. He's not that guy, pal. Bo Nix, I have never been a fan of. He started his career with the Auburn Tigers and was just all over the place. Ends up going to Oregon where he was, you know, close to 40 years old by the time he got to Oregon. And he led the nation in completion percentage, put up some really good numbers, uh, set the FBS record for completion percentage there with the Oregon Ducks. But, I mean, it was a quarterback-friendly system. He was going up against easier defenses in the Pac-12 than he faced at Oregon, that he faced at Auburn. I think at the end of the day, he's still the same QB he was with the Auburn Tigers. And I'm just not impressed. Bo Nix, to me, is not going to be a franchise quarterback that's not going to uh, he's not going to get the job done, win the important games when it matters. And I think Sean Payton is clearly overrated. He has not been the same coach without Drew Brees, and I have no reason to think that they are going to develop and turn things around and get this program on track where it needs to be. And with all that they've lost this offseason uh, of the changes that they've made, with all that money they're paying Russ and moving on from Jerry Judy and – among other things there, I think it's going to be a disastrous year for the, the, the donkeys this year. I got the donkeys going 3-14 and 14 in 2024 and having one of the worst records in the NFL this year. Now, we're going to talk about another bad quarterback in the division in just a moment, the Las Vegas Raiders, Aiden O'Connell, AOC. Who's the worst QB in this division? Is it Bo Nix or is it Aiden O'Connell? We're going to give Justin Herbert the benefit of the doubt here. We don't include him in this for obvious reasons. Uh, who is it? Weigh in our pin comment today. Let us know. Type Bo for Bo Nix. AOC for Aiden O'Connell. Let us know. Let's go to Los Angeles now where the L.A. Chargers, I believe, are the team most likely to finish in second and compete for a wild card spot. I got to tell you, I think the Chargers actually had a good offseason, all things considered. I thought – they nailed it with hiring Jim Harbaugh. We'll talk about that here in just a second. Uh, they were in salary cap hell and really just made the most of the circumstance that they had with uh, restructuring deals with their star defensive players, Khalil Mack and Bosa. They traded Keenan Allen, Keenan Allen away to the Chicago Bears uh, and got some draft capital out of him. They released Mike Williams. He ended up signing with the New York Jets. So there was an obvious hole at the receiver position. You did bring in DJ Chark from Carolina. That should help things. You bring in J.K. Dobbins from Baltimore. You got some reinforcements in that backfield. And then the draft. Uh, you bring in Joe Alt. We knew they'd need help on the offensive line. Uh, they also drafted Lad McConkey to help out that wide receiver spot. I thought, all things considered, the Chargers are headed in the right track. And I think that Jim Harbaugh is a significant upgrade from Brandon Staley at the head coaching position. I think you look at Jim Harbaugh and his track record. He's won everywhere he's been, right? Michigan, the Niners, taking them to a Super Bowl. Stanford, the best they've ever been as a football program was under his lead. Even the University of San Diego, he did a good job back then. Former NFL coach of the year, won a national championship this past year with the Michigan Wolverines, and he is tailor-made 
to be an NFL head coach. This is going to be a seamless transition for him going from college football to the NFL. And the long-term prospects, this is the team that's going to be the biggest threat to the Chiefs for the next several years in the AFC West because you have the coach and you have the quarterback. I think the Chargers take a step in the right direction. They have a tough schedule, though. I think they go 9-8 and eight in contention for one of those final wild-card spots, a winning record, and a successful year for the Chargers moving forward. Um, still some work to be done, clearly, but I think that team is on the right note from here going forward, uh, and I think you're going to see Jim Harbaugh do a very good job there in Los Angeles in his first year. Xavier Worthy jersey's on sale now. Chatsports.com slash Worthy. He is worthy. Xavier Worthy, that is. And we have the red jersey. We have the white jersey. We've got men's and women's options available for you. And uh, all different sorts of shapes and sizes. You can go see for yourself. Go to Chatsports.com slash Worthy to get yours today. Might stumble upon some free shipping as well. Be looking for those promo codes. The link is in the comments and description of today's video. Chatsports.com slash Worthy. Now we head to the Raiders, the Las Vegas Raiders. I think this team is the most likely among all the teams in this division to be looking for a new head coach and quarterback in 2025. Yes, uh, the jury is still out on their quarterback situation uh, as well as their head coach, Antonio Pierce. Let's start with the quarterback situation here. Aiden O'Connell, I know that he beat the Chiefs in Christmas, but he didn't really do much in that game. Didn't even complete a pass in the fourth quarter. Um, Aiden O'Connell, I don't think, is that great. I think he is a career backup at best. Gardner Minshew, Gardner, terrific story for the former Washington State quarterback who was a late day three pick for what he's done in his career. But these guys are backup quarterbacks. These are not the long-term solutions uh, for the Las Vegas Raiders at quarterback. They do not have their franchise guy. They're not even anywhere close to their franchise guy there in Las Vegas. It isn't going to matter who starts between AOC or Gardner Minshew because the Raiders aren't going to go anywhere with either of those guys under center. Meanwhile, their head coach, Antonio Pierce. Antonio Pierce got a lot of credit for how the Raiders responded when he took over for Josh McDaniels uh, there as the interim head coach. And we saw the Charger game specifically where they just played a perfect game that day. It was unbelievable, right? And that's ultimately what got Brandon Staley fired. Um, you know, that was a big deal. No, no doubt about it. The Chiefs win on Christmas, big deal for Antonio Pierce. But I think a lot of people are kind of reading too much into two games and not the entire body of work. He was still barely above 500. Um, you know, you're looking at somebody that had never been a coordinator before. I mean, he was a linebackers coach previously. And without question, he is the worst coach in this division. And it's not even close. There is something different about him than the others, right? Andy Reid, Sean Payton, they just got Super Bowls. Jim Harbaugh's been to a Super Bowl. He's won a college football playoff national title. Antonio Pierce hasn't done anything in this league. And he is not even close to their level. I think the jury's still out on him. I think it was a bit of an overreaction to just the cultural shift of uh, the guys buying in. I, I don't think Antonio Pierce is going to do that great of a job. There's some talent on this Raiders team. Max Crosby is one of the best defensive players in football. Devontae Adams one of the best receivers in football. Uh, you know, some of the other moves they made. I liked their draft, you know, drafting Brock Bowers and everything. But this team still has a lot of holes, and uh, they don't have the right head coach, and they don't have the right quarterback. I think you're looking at a 6-11 and season for the Las Vegas Raiders. We'll talk about your Kansas City Chiefs in a moment, but first, which Chiefs AFC West division rival do you hate the most? For me, it's the, it's the Donkeys. It's the Denver Broncos. Uh, I still think back to all those years with Elway and then the Peyton Manning era and all that where they kind of just own the Chiefs. I know it seems like so long ago with all the Chiefs' success they've had as of late. But for me, it's, it's the donkeys that I still despise more than anybody. What about you guys? Way in the comments section, tell me the team you hate the most among the AFC West. We are bringing you the best Chiefs coverage you won't find anywhere else. Here are the Chiefs report with daily news and rumors. Anytime the Chiefs have breaking news, good or bad, we'll bring you a video as quick as we can here on the channel. Help us reach our next milestone, 55,000 subscribers 
here on the channel. Just over 200 subs away from reaching that mark. For the latest happenings on your Kansas City Chiefs all offseason long, subscribe now for free, youtube.com slash Chiefs TV. All right, you knew it was going to be good when we got to the Kansas City Chiefs. The Kansas City Chiefs, without question, not even close, are most likely to win the AFC West and win the Super Bowl of any team in this division. And they're the only team that has a shot at winning the Super Bowl in this division as well. The Chiefs offseason. I know that we have spent a lot of time talking about Rasheed Rice, right? And, you know, Harrison Butker has been in the headlines and, you know, a few other things that have happened off the field, right? But when you go back to the football element, it's actually been a pretty good offseason for the Chiefs. You re-signed Chris Jones. You got him locked in for the next several years. Uh, the best defensive tackle in football now. You are in great shape with Chris Jones coming in. Marquise Brown comes over from the Arizona Cardinals and not terribly expensive either and a natural fit for this Kansas City Chiefs offense with the speed he brings to the table, the deep threat that they haven't really had since Tyreek Hill departed. Marquise Brown, I think I'm very excited to see Hollywood come to Kansas City. You traded Legereus Sneed to the Tennessee Titans. Uh, that wasn't ideal having to move on from Legereus Sneed, but that was really your only loss. You can't keep everybody, right? You signed Irv Smith from Cincinnati. He'll compete for one of those uh, tight end roles. And then the draft, I thought the Chiefs had a very good draft. I loved the pick of Xavier Worthy. You pair him up with Marquise Brown and Rasheed Rice, all of a sudden this Chiefs receiving core looks a lot better than what it did in 2023 when they had the worst receiving core in the entire NFL this past year. And then, like, the standard, right? The Chiefs, until somebody takes it away from them, they are the team to beat until said otherwise. This run, you know, I knew this mentally in my head, but it's another thing when you just see it visually, see it on screen, right? This is the type of thing that everybody watching right now should just stop and smile when they see this, folks. Like, the last six years, this has been the Mahomes era of him as the full-time starter, have been nothing like anything we've ever seen in the National Football League. 2018, 12-4, Lost in the AFC Championship game. 2019, 12-4, won the Super Bowl. 2020, 14-2, lost in the Super Bowl against Tampa Bay. 2021, 12-5, lost in the AFC Championship to Cincinnati. 2022, 14-3, Super Bowl title over Philly. Last year, the worst record, the worst team of the Mahomes era at 11-6. What'd they do? They still won the Super Bowl. So, folks, there's no reason to think that based on this offseason, that things are going to be any different. The Chiefs are still the team to beat. They're even a better team than they were a season ago. I think this is a 14-3 and campaign for the Kansas City Chiefs, and they're right back to uh, where they've been of being the favorites to win the whole thing once again. What will the Chiefs' final record be for 2024? Wait in the comments section. Let us know what you think. Three, Pete? Sounds nice to me. Let us know what you think. I'm Tyler Jones. Appreciate you joining us. We'll see you next time here on the Chiefs Report. Thank <music> you.